At Right Networks, they help accountants move their accounting-based desktop and legacy applications to the cloud, giving you the freedom and flexibility to scale your business, expand to new locations, and deliver an even higher level of service. There's only one thing you need to do. you got to give them a call. Call them at 888-469-5905. That was 1-888-469-5905. And be sure you told them that Ron and Mike sent you. And today, right here, right now, this is the moment that you will finally say, I'm growing my accounting practice. And you're going to discover exactly how, right here, right now, I'm going to grow my accounting practice podcast. Episode 116. Nice, man. Yeah. Welcome, everyone. I'm Ron Saharian, co-founder of Profit First Professionals. And I'm Mike Michalowicz, the other co-founder of Profit First Professionals, also the author of Profit First I hope you have your copy by now. You know, with the expanded and revised edition, has been out for almost six months now. Mm. You better pick up your copy. And you, my friends, you're listening to GMAP. That stands for Grow My Accounting Practice. The show where we teach you every element, every step, everything you need to know about growing your accounting or bookkeeping practice. And, of course, we give you the GMAP Now task. We believe we're the only show in the entire interweb that's doing this. It's the one task that if you do it today, at the end of the show, you will grow your accounting practice. Plus, we always interview an amazing guest. And... And we have a little insider access today. Yeah, insider access. Something that we got going on here that we think you can use to learn, use to grow your practice. Something you can learn from. And, and you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, and of course, my favorite, GrowMyAccountingPractice.com. Yeah, and be sure to subscribe and, and leave your comments. We, we want to hear them. We, we take them very seriously. And uh, listen, if you're subscribing, you'll never miss an episode. This episode's not one you're going to miss. No. We have a very special guest coming on. His name is Ian Wellman, and uh, he's going from across the pond. He's got something special to share. You know, there's a lot of confusion, a lot of confusion about what advisory services mean in the accounting and bookkeeping world. Mm -hmm. Everyone says you need to do it, but people are like, well, what the hell is it? And then how do I do that? And then, yeah, once I know what the hell it is, what do I do with it? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to finally bring some clarity to what it means to provide advisory services, how you go about it, and uh, yeah, you're going to learn some exciting insights around that. Uh, let me see, Ron. Oh, yeah. we got to thank our corporate partners. I do, but I got to do one more thing. Uh, yeah, oh. In my notes, I got to, uh, our GMAP, uh, the little thing we're doing, that thing, special thing. Oh, yeah. If, if, you, uh, if you send your text, I mean, pull out that, that smartphone. You're probably listening on a smartphone right now. Pull out your phone of yours. Dial this number, or well, first get to the texting app, and then dial 678-506-7543, and write in GMAP, G-M-A-P, because you're going to get something special. It's free access to our monthly webinar. Something you should charge for, we're now giving to subscribers only for free. So send GMAP, that's G-M-A-P, to 678-506-7543. We'll uh, give you the premium premiere free access <laughs> to our webinars. All right, now let's thank our corporate partners to make the show a reality. Yes, thank you, Funbox. Thank you, Nextiva. Thank you, oh Ur my. I'm all slow to my. Oh my. And of course, Right Networks. Oh Stepping my. up big. Yeah, yeah. So by all means, we want you to use our corporate partners. We want you to learn more about them. They support the show. They make the show a reality. And we'll give you more details about them in just a minute. But first... Mm -hmm. I want to thank Marcy Hanhart. Marcy Hanhart uh, is an extraordinary prop first professional. She gave me a call and said, Mike, you got to get Ian Wellman on. I'm like, why? Why? What's going on? And he's like, she goes, Ian is the first guy I've met that has brought clarity to what advisory services are. Because there's constant talk about it, Ron. Right. Everywhere we go. E every podcast, every conference, advisory services, advisory services. Yep. After qualifying as a chartered accountant with Ernst & Young, Ian Wellman moved out of public practice and became a CFO of a Barcelona-based publicly traded company. He's the host of a very popular podcast on iTunes called The Accounting Success. Ian and his wife, Linda, have been married for 30 years and have twin daughters. He is devoted. I mean, he's an uber fan of the Manchester United football team and uh, is also an avid golfer. And one thing you don't know about Ian, but you're about to find out, he speaks three languages. Ooh. English, Australian, and American English. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, welcome to the show. Welcome, Ian. 
That, Mike, that was a great introduction. And thank you. An actual fact, you're, you're pretty close with the uh, the English Australian. I think it might have been South African, but uh, from Manchester, <laughs> I think if I if I let my accent come through, I'm not sure that our listeners would be able to understand everything that I'm saying. I was uh, I just returned from uh, two weeks in Australia, and I had to actually create a little dictionary of terms they use. Like they're like, oh, there goes a tradie. There's a Sparky. Let's go play pokey. And I'm like, what are these terms? And uh, they're just abbreviated versions of tradesmen, electricians is a sparky, and a pokey is a poker, or uh, one hand, one arm bandit. Um, oh. So it's funny how English kind of bastardizes into different versions. <laughs> so, uh, Ian, talk about bastardization. There's no question the term advisory services has been bastardized. I mean, I, I hear it thrown out all the time, and, and quite frankly, Ian, no one knows what it means. C- can you first define what advisory services truly is? Yeah, sure. I think that it'd be interesting to sort of focus a little bit what people tend to gravitate, gravitate towards when we talk about advisory services in the from an accounting profession. They see advisory services somehow related to financial advisors, mainly because those guys have been uh, part of their uh, Rolodex in old-fashioned terms for a long time. But the reality is that advisory services goes way beyond the the sorts of things that looking after uh, people's stock portfolios and uh, other things around their financial well-being. It's actually more about uh, the the whole uh, business advisory world. So uh, there's many, many uh, accountants have uh, a real uh, hardcore set of clients, which are business owners. And those business owners are constantly needing help with things. And typically what happens there is the business owner will call up his accountant because it is his most trusted advisor. They'll call the accountant and they'll say, hey, I've got a problem with this. And then the accountant goes into reactive, really really is in reactive mode. And he may be able to help them with something internally from his business or he'll go outside to uh, an attorney or some other kind of advisor and bring them along. But really, that's relying on the uh, business owner themselves discovering what their problems are. And as Mm. you know, they're so busy, so busy on their day-to-day stuff. Those entrepreneurial guys are spinning plates like crazy. They only come across things when it's a real problem or, or something happens or changes in their businesses and it brings about a requirement. There's no proactive advice going on from the accountant. So what we're talking about is a way whereby the accountants can use their relationship to start to advise their business owner clients proactively across the whole spectrum of business needs. All right, so let's talk about how you use, as an accountant or bookkeeper, that relationship to be proactive. What are the techniques you can do to, to be proactive? Well, you can you can try and devote, uh, develop some kind of uh, uh, regular meeting with your business owner clients. Uh, you can try to uh, set up some sort of uh, questionnaire or, or, or something of that nature to establish things that are troubling them. But the reality is you need a full process, a complete system. Because if you have a full processing and complete system, what that will allow you to do is we'll be able to engage with your business owner clients at a much higher level, at a much more, and and it'll be with the things that are really important to them, and you'll help them discover what's important to them, and you'll be able to generate benefit and add value to your client for years to come. And at the same time, your practice will grow and you will have a million things to talk about with your clients rather than just be there for the uh, basic tax planning and compliance work, which most uh, accountants earn the majority of their money from. So you talk about regular meetings. I first want to dig into that. You know, our accountant, it's, it's quite frankly, it's year end, right? Maybe mid-year says we should do some tax planning and, and there's not much more to it. If I develop a regular meeting, how can I inspire or encourage a customer that's been used to the I'll meet you once a year get into some kind of rhythm with me is there some way to convince them that's necessary and and helps them yes uh, there is and I think it's one of these conversations that you have let's say you you've known a a client here he's he's a business owner a couple of partners and say you've been working with him for the past seven eight nine years 
And you sit down with him and you say, you know, we've been looking at the way we've been servicing all of our clients. And we realize that this is, uh, we've been concentrating uh, and being reactive. We've concentrated on on a small area of the areas we could help you with. Uh, what we've been able to do is we've been able to uh, develop a, a system alongside an, uh, an external partner, which will allow us to work with you on a uh, monthly, uh, bi-monthly, quarterly basis to help you grow and get your business to wherever it needs to be. And we have a system for that. And if you'd like to know more, uh, I'd like to share with you uh, how that works and uh, how we can work together going forward. Now, nearly every business owner, if you say to them these words, we can help you get to wherever you want to go, and we can help you grow revenues, grow profits, grow business value, very few are not going to be intrigued or interested to take the next step and ask you, well, what does that mean? Can you demonstrate that to me? And that's the beginning steps to setting up that relationship in that way. And frankly, yes, there are a few other steps you have to go through before you start to have those regular meetings, but they will come because the business owner will find them so valuable. And I think one thing we might want to say here is being a business owner can be a bit of a lonely place. Often you don't have many people to talk to at a very, very in-depth and detailed uh, level, maybe a business partner, but often uh, even that conversation needs to be facilitated. And that's another part of the whole advisory service. You actually help by facilitating the real hard discussions and important discussions between business owners who are um, uh, who maybe haven't spoken about some of the things that have been on their mind for many years. Yeah, we have uh, easily a thousand listeners every day to our show. I don't know what the report was this morning. Twelve hundred, I think, downloads. Mm-hmm. Uh, all counts and bookkeepers, Ian. And I, I think that question of you know, or, or that that approach of we can help you get your business to where you want it to go. If someone off the street says that, comes to my business and says, I can help you get your business where you want to go, no way am I listening to that person. This is a scam. This is going to be a pitch. But it seems like, Ian, as an accountant or bookkeeper, you are such a trusted person that when you say that, they are all ears. Do you find that accountants and bookkeepers have preferential treatment when they come to a client with with something like that approach? We can help you grow? I think almost certainly that the trusted element uh, has been key. The business owner has relied on his accountant year in, year out to do his tax returns. Maybe he does some uh, other accounting reports for him. And he's he's the go-to person. I think almost every time that business pro- uh, owner has any kind of issue, if he can't solve it immediately internally, he picks up the phone to his accountant and, and says, I got a problem. Can you help me with this? What we're doing is we're, we are... We are helping the accountants effectively uh, switch that role to be proactive so that they are working alongside in a partnership with their business owner clients. And in fact, attacking things in the right sequence, helping filter the million things that need to get done down to the five most important ones that are going to make the biggest difference to the to the client's business in the next 12 or 18 months, and then holding them accountable along the way. Uh, that accountability factor is huge as well, because we all know, Mike, we, we own businesses. If people don't keep us accountable, we'll go back to business as usual, and we'll keep doing the things that we like or we think are successful, but we won't do the, some of the critical things that need to get done to grow our business maybe two or three or fourfold. Right. And Ian, and, and I have um, was coaching or consulting one of our, our members, and I, I said, you know, ask uh, what other... Uh, services that they could possibly help you out with and they went ahead and did it but then what happened was they came back to me and said ron i have to do some commissions analysis and you know various different things that i've never done before how do i do that so how do we prevent ourselves from taking on something that we may not necessarily be competent in that's a fantastic point. I, I'm so pleased you brought that up. Um, that is one of the things which clearly uh, a CPA has tremendous skills and uh, is technically brilliant in many, many ways. 
but they can't have all of the skills to satisfy all of the issues that a business owner would have. Right. And so what they need is they need an umbrella organization, an umbrella of experts who are tried and tested by other CPAs. And that is to say that that means that guaranteed quality, guaranteed that they'll work in the same way with their clients that the CPA themselves would, who they can call upon when something comes along that they don't actually do themselves. We can just pick on one right right now, for instance, and a, a, an obvious one comes to mind. Um, there may be an issue with uh, a benefits package, for instance, mm -hmm. um, for uh, the employees. The CPA is not going to have the knowledge to deliver some sort of uh, expert advice on what's the most appropriate benefits package for the employees of this business owner. Whereas if he can call upon an expert who that's all they do all the time, then that's very valuable. He knows that he's getting a top class expert and the client is getting the best possible advice. Um, and uh, he's really helping his client by doing that. Okay. So let's talk about getting to those core questions. You said when you're sitting down with the client, you know, you want to start evaluating, I guess, their challenges. You want you want to get to the core questions you have. So say you get these meetings with these clients. What, what kind of questions should we be asking them so we can put ourselves in a position to be advisory? Well, I think I think the danger is that we all make our own list. And, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and, and then let's put it this way. You know, we've got four partners in a, in a CPA firm and 10 staff. And, and so 14 people are asking business clients different things. And we end up really with no way to service those clients consistently. And maybe one guy's asking better questions than the other and so on and so forth. So what you really need is you need to adopt a common uh, survey or a common questionnaire. Um, and normally those questionnaires are best built by experts as well. I wouldn't suggest for a moment that a CPA firm tried to build a sophisticated business questionnaire for business owners because they won't they won't tackle all of the points that they need to. So you bring that's in itself requires some expertise. And frankly, the fact that it's consistent will allow everybody in the CPA firm to work on the same system and be able to deliver the same quality of results and advice. So I would I would definitely suggest that you have an expert or adopt an expert's process for uh, identification of the issues, which normally would go through, as I say, some sort of survey, followed up with a, a prioritization or a filtration process of all of the issues which are identified through that. And ultimately, what you want to get to is you want to get to a plan, a plan which both you as the uh, CPA and the business owners are agreed upon is going to make significant difference to their business. And I would highly recommend that you decide with the, the business owner, what is their ultimate destination for the business? And by that, I mean, are they going to sell the business? Are they going to uh, have a succession plan for family or uh, maybe uh, other partners or other managers already in the business? Do they believe that it's going to be so successful that they could launch an IPO? Um, and what are the timescales for all that? And are all the partners, for instance, all of the same mindset? Let's say they they ultimately expect to sell, and this is a two partner business. And their one partner says, "Well, I want to sell in five years," and the other partner says, "I want to sell in ten years." That's something that needs to be resolved mm. right up front before you undertake any of those those actions uh, to to improve things, because you you could be ending up going uh, for two different goals. So we need a common goal before we even start. You know, Ian, there's a, and I'm kind of paraphrasing a saying, but if uh, if a heart surgeon comes up to you and says, uh, "I'm ready to perform heart surgery on you, and you need it," and then the heart surgeon says, "By the way, you're my first patient," uh, we're like very hesitant to work with them. We want someone with experience. Yet, the heart surgeon has to have the first surgery they conduct. I think the same kind of parallel plays out here for any accountant or bookkeeper listening in, is if they're moving to advisory services, they have to have that first client. But is the first client going to be receptive to getting advisory services from someone that hasn't provided them before? 
Well, I think it's the I think it's how the um, CPA brings that message along, because let's not forget the heart surgeon had training and he had practice along the way. Mm, what true. happened with him is he he had education and he had a mentor and he had a senior surgeon who he worked under. And there's no difference for the CPA firms. They can engage with experts who can actually provide that so that the client is actually getting the, the full-blown blown great experience right on day one because the CPA isn't reliant only on his own skill set. He has an expert partner who has done this many, many times with or every bit type of business that you can think of. And mm. so, the, and, and as you'll understand, what happens then is as the CPA gains competency in that, uh, in that discussion, is still never going to be the expert in all of the disciplines that are required to be brought to implement the plans that the CPA and the business owner desire, decide that they want to push forward with. But it's certainly he can become the heart surgeon uh, in relatively short time because, again, I'm recommending that they use the same process all the time. And as you know, it doesn't take very long. If you're process driven, you have a roadmap. As long as you follow that, you'll learn very quickly. And then really what it allows you to do is it allows you to concentrate rather on the process, on the content which your business owner is providing you with. Um, and therefore, between you and the business owner, you can pull together those plans and uh, identify what experts are needed and how to implement the plans, et cetera, et cetera. But you're quite right. There is a first time for everybody. Um, but the CPA doesn't need to feel like he's diving into the pool and he's got to swim completely alone. He should put his toe in the water and he should have a guy holding his hand saying, it's OK, I'm going to walk you through this. And your client is going to have a great experience because I have the experience to take the client through this. By the time the CPA is done four or five clients, he's going to be feeling very confident and he's going to always have the ability to bring along the process expert and the industry, uh, I, I should say, the business owner um, experts in <clears throat> in this diagnostic process, you can always bring him back in. It's just like, uh, again, the surgeon. When he has a particular, uh, dif particularly difficult case, he'll often consult with colleagues and get some advice and look uh, at some historical examples of how a case has been handled. Right. And so this almost seems like a little bit um, uh, like an advisory board where you have uh, several go to um, industry experts. Um, but what if I wanted to not necessarily go outsource to it um, and I wanted to focus on a few select key issues? Uh, are there, Do you see a couple of uh, key issues that's common for most business owners that maybe, you know, we could look to develop on our own? Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> I think I do. Um, one of the key um, elements of uh, certainly the entrepreneurial or the, the not the fully uh, developed businesses, a, a lot of them are really good at doing the at doing stuff, but they're not really good at identifying how to improve and how to grow. Um, and that's probably because they don't know how to measure things properly. They don't know how to develop uh, proper uh, key performance indicators. Now, a CPA could be in a great position to develop those uh, key performance indicators for business owners because they have the technical skills. All they really need to do is understand the business to a sufficient level that they're able to build those uh, indicators with the client. Now, believe you me, even under those circumstances, the CPA may talk to an external expert, but more likely is going to spend time talking to his client and developing those key performance indicators. And some of the simplest ones revolve around the fact that um, the business owner may not even produce financial statements on a regular basis. So he won't necessarily know, for instance, every month where his, uh, his major uh, sales are coming from or where the margins uh, of different areas of his, his business are better or worse than others. Um, so those things are really, really important. I, I mean, I can give you, uh, I can give you a very, a very simple case study uh, of actually a a particular um, a particular industry and a a particular client. Um, 
this particular client was in the is, is in the car dealer business and they'd established a, a really good brand they were very very successful but their profits have been stagnant for four or five years and one of the reasons were that they weren't able to identify clearly what their um, what where they should be growing or where they should be concentrating their efforts so when that uh, the CPA firm came along with a uh, with a, a review. They identified that there were some benchmarks which were not being met by that dealership. Specifically, the number of cars that they serviced relation uh, related to the number of cars they was they sold was not at the industry uh, benchmark. So that means that they were selling cars and they were being maintained at other facilities. They fixed that and they they immediately saw a big spike in their profit. So from then on, they they were very careful to ma measure the proportion of cars sold versus the proportion of cars which that also came to, for service. You know, throughout you've been talking about systems, Ian, um, the necessity for systems, the importance of systems. Why is having systems so important? Uh, you can replicate, you can scale, you can teach it. Uh, you uh, you'll you'll be consistent. You can measure your own your own success. Um, you can measure internally uh, which of, of your CPAs are doing a, a a better job than others. So you can coach the ones who are and mentor the ones who aren't doing as well, or you can change it up. You might find that some of them are, are just not cut out to be advisory folks, and they should be back it and sit in in the compliance area where and you bring on somebody else who is more suited to the advisory role. I think that's something that you've got to recognize. Uh, not every single person in your firm is going to be great at the advisory roles. But I think it's also a good fit for millennials as well because millennials, um, their whole approach to work, I think, it, I think it sits well with them that they could be some sort of holistic, involved uh, uh, person in their clients' uh, successes, and I think that would be a, a I think that's a, a talent attractor. Actually, I think that many CPA firms would be happy to have that because I think that would enable them to to attract better talent and retain it. But you know, advisory services seem so ad hoc um, mm -hmm. that it's very dynamic. It, it almost seems that bringing systems to it would uh, kind of be a detriment that that's too formalized that that the dynamics aren't built in am i misreading that i think i think that that's not really that you are because the system is there to capture everything not to restrict mm. it it's a way of consistently capturing there are no that there are no rules as to what the uh, can be discussed there are no rules there's a framework so that we 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 point the discussion to all of the key areas in a business um, and we're able to, uh, shall we describe it as, um, keep, the, uh, keep the discussion moving forward. But it, if essentially, every discussion that I've ever been in with a business owner after they've done a survey, we must have, we, we never have more than, less than 40 or 50 things that need to get done. And then the secret source is using the process to identify and prioritize those that need to get done first. And frankly, there's always a few quick wins. Um, you want to go with things that are uh, high value, low effort. So uh, we actually recommend scoring things in terms of how much effort it takes and how much value they'll add. And when you put a matrix together like that, you, you can easily find the first th three or four things which are going to be relatively high value, relatively low effort. Deal with those. Everybody feels good. You build momentum. The results sh normally show um, actually uh, at, at the bottom line so that then the, the business owner is, is then encouraged to go on and do some of the more uh, larger game changing, almost, uh, if you will, um, you would describe them as business defining things because they now have the confidence having got some uh, great things under their belt and seen some benefits to their profits. Love it. Love it. Take, get the small wins, build the momentum, and then on to larger things. That's it. Small, well, eat, not small wins, easy wins. Big, yeah, high, easy. He, said, he said low effort, high value. So big yeah. wins with little effort. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So nice. the clients will measure that result. Yeah. Hey, Ian, yeah. we got to start wrapping things up, but you have a, a special system called the Hayden Rock System. 
uh, that I believe kind of facilitates all the stuff you're talking about. Would you mind sharing some details on that system you have? Sure, sure. Well, let me let me kind of look, put it like this, Mike. Um, the Hayden Rock system, it helps accounting firms build and scale their high value advisory services. And as far as I'm aware, it's the only program it's kind to increase revenue per client and it maximizes billable hours while serving clients at the highest level. In other words, you're really helping your client. Now, the system succeeds by making advisory a steady, and, and we used the word before, predictable uh, right. as compliance work, but it's much more profitable because it's much more valuable to the client, and consequently, the rewards for the CPA are also much higher. It'll produce a, literally a year's worth of, of advisory um, from each of your um, qualified business owner clients. So what's going to happen is every year you're going to have work which comes out of this advisory process. And we have in our system, we have all of the tools. We have the surveys. We have the filtering or the prioritization. We have a workshop uh, set up online so you can actually get to that one page plan. So with your client. And finally, um, we have a meeting plan that we agree with the uh, for the CPA to agree with his client. On f once a year, at the end of the year, the client gets to uh, actually um, score the, the CPA. They get to give him mm. a score. Of, did he do well? If he did, if he if he did well, then that's an opportunity for the CPA to ask the client for a referral or a testimonial. Uh, if he didn't do well, then he, he should be bringing in uh, another partner from an independent partner from the firm to interview the client and move and, and, and remove the barriers that prevented them uh, satisfying the client's needs. Finally, I think there's this there's this opportunity at that juncture also to review the successes of the last year and keep that momentum going and set up what's going to happen what's going to be concentrated on for the next 12 months. Love it. Not only year-end um, review, but uh, upcoming year's strategic planning. Yeah, all integrated, yes. right? Yep, absolutely. So, so it's, yes. it's, it's built into the system. That sounds wild. So, so, Ian, where can people find out more about the system? Where, where do they go? Well, if they'd like to visit us online, um, you can go to www.howtodoadvisory.com. That's howtodoadvisory.com. Um, that that would be a great place to start. Alternatively, you can reach me directly uh, at uh, Hayden Rock. I will give you my email address if that's okay. They can reach sure. me directly at uh, my name, I-W-E-L-H-A-N at HaydenRock.com, H-A-Y-D-E-N-R-O-C-K.com. So I Wellam at HaydenRock.com um, or, as I say, visit HowToDoAdvisory.com. And I think that the, in a snapshot, you'll get it if you visit that website. Great. Ian Wellam, thank you so much yes, for being on the you. show Great today. Stuff. Okay. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much for inviting me, guys. Uh, you do a great job, and I like you, your podcasts are fun, and I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Good. Now it's about to get crazy. There's going to be some crazy music with Survivor coming up, so just uh, <laughs> hang tight. But uh, Ian, thanks again, and uh, yeah, please do hang tight. We got to do some uploads on your side, and uh, you, our dear listening friends, we got to summarize what we learned from uh, Ian. Uh, we got to discuss insider access, mm -hmm. something we got going behind the scenes. Plus, we got GMAP now task. But first. What are you yeah. doing to me? You're going to yeah. blow my eardrums. Nah, Brian will fix that. You won't even hear it on the other no, side. No, my eardrums. My, yeah. my, my, my. All right, here it is one more time just to get you upset. <laughs> we like to do that to uh, thank our corporate partners. You know, these are the folks that make this show a reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were Fundabox, Nextiva, Receipt Bank, and Right Networks. Let's share a little bit about them. You know why? Because your clients can use them. Do you want to talk about them or should yeah, I? Yeah, I'd okay. love to talk about them. I mean, let's talk about Funbox, the ultimate cash flow accelerators. Maybe some of your customers need um, you know, their money. Maybe they're that behind on their receivables, 60, 90, oh 120 my. days. Yeah. Well, give Fund Funbox a call, and they will advance you that money. Yep. Up to 30 grand. 50 grand. Oh, is it up to 50 grand? Yeah. Okay. I believe so. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Nextiva. Oh, one of the best... 
phone systems. Oh my. Not one of the, the best phone system yeah. we've ever worked with, we've ever had, I've even had. And talk about, you know, customer support, the latest and greatest technology, and they're caring. They're you know their 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 phone system also has the um, the video conferencing. If mm. you want, we don't. I don't think we use it. We don't have video. Did, no, we didn't. Okay, I know you have the more advanced phone. Mm. Uh, you can do a mix of phones. So you have an advanced phone. Um, some of the basic ones floating around the office. There's all different variations. Well, the advanced phone that I had, I, the reason why I got it was noise cancellation because we have a lot of echoes and yeah, we have an open there. space. Yeah, there. I'm in the pit. I'm and how do pit. you like it? No one's complained at all. No one says, no one, since I've got that phone, really? no one has said, it's too loud. Man, what's going on over there? Or I, can, can you speak up? Or I've, or if I've said, hey, quiet down, people. We may want to, uh, over time, replace all the phones for everyone else in the, the pit, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, next Nextiva, voice over IP phone system. It is a, the most affordable solution for a high end phone system in the world. No mm -hmm. question about it. Um, two more folks I want to thank Right Networks. They are a, um, a modernization, if you will, of old school but wonderful apps. They bring things to the cloud. So that accounting system, QBD, for example, you can get that on the web today. No longer trying to get a client to dial in, sending, you know, God forbid you're sending a USB drive back and forth over the mail, any of that stuff, uh, trying to sync up with people. No, put it on the web today. Right Networks will do that for you. And you can go to Right Networks, of course, or you can go to 888 Call 888-469-5905. And uh, last but certainly not least is Receipt Bank. Receipt Bank, yes. Receipt Bank, you know, it is the ultimate productivity tool. Uh, for me, it's the ultimate receipt scanning tool because I no longer have a, a box of receipts. I used to jam in my wallet, and then I'd empty out my wallet with these crunched up You're like things. George Costanza with that wallet. Yeah. Now, literally, I have one today. Scan it. It's right in. It syncs up with our, we use QBO. Mm -hmm. Syncs right up with it. One, two, three. It's done. That's great. I was showing off yesterday. Um, I was at uh, my fantasy draft a couple of, well, by the time this airs, whatever. Yeah. But I'm sitting there, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to snap a picture with my receipt bank. Oh, right so you, go, you don't do someone's house. You go out or whatever. Yeah. To, yeah, you have some dinner, and then, Yep, right there. And they're looking at me. What are you doing? I'm like, yeah, don't yeah, worry about I'm it. I'm high tech. Don't worry about it. Yep. Exactly. Now you yeah, you better get it yourself. All right, Ron. Um, mm -hmm. Today we got something special. We're gonna do, first do our summary, and then we're gonna do a, kind of insider access to something we have cool going on here. Sure. Um, what did you learn today from Ian? Well, what I what I really enjoyed is Ian's um, eloquent way of bridging the conversation to offer. Um, advisory services, how he started off with, we've been concentrating on only a very small aspect of your business and we can yeah. help you grow. We can help you grow your revenues. We can help you grow value. We can help you get where you want to go, you know, which was very, very good because people are looking like, what do I say? How do, how do how I do say, say it? it? Yeah. As well as, you know, the suggestions about having regular meetings. It's something that we, we advocate big time, having that weaved into your engagement letters, that whether you're going to have a regularly scheduled strategic meeting quarterly, monthly, weekly, yearly, whatever it happens. But get, get those regular meetings scheduled. And over time, you'll find out really what's troubling them. And those are the systems and, and the opportunity that can help you and your firm grow. I like that Ian brought clarity to what advisory services was. Mm -hmm. And what I heard from Ian was traditional services are reactive. The business owner identifies a problem right. they have, and then right. they call you, and then you scramble to fix it. Right. But advisory services, he's suggesting, is proactive, mm -hmm. where you're looking and saying, here's an opportunity or challenge that's coming your way, and I can address it. So I thought that was a great clarity. And I love that ultimate question or the ultimate point you make to your existing customers. We have tools or skills. We can help you to get you where you want to go. And like he suggested, since you're already trusted, you're already working with them, by saying that, it invokes the ultimate in curiosity. They're going to say, well, how can you help us? So a guy off the street can't do it. You have an opportunity to do this because you're already trusted. We have tools or we have a method to help you get where you want to go. Do you want our help? Um, really two powerful takeaways. And then you know, a third one. Do all the high value, low effort things. Oh, yeah. Meaning, you can have an immediate impact to a client, and they can see the impact because it's high value. I thought that was pretty significant too. Yeah, absolutely. Get those little wins and uh, keep the ball rolling. Yes, right. All right. So something special here. Why isn't Q and there? It goes. There's Ron. Oh. Laser. So instead of doing Obi Ron today, I mean Obi Ron's going to be here, but we want to <laughs> do a little. 
what we call the insider access. In, inside the Jedi training facility, if we, if we want, must say so. Yeah, and there's a little million things we do here at the office that we think apply to all accounting and bookkeeping firms and the other things we do with first professionals. Today we wanted to share something that's kind of atypical, but it's had an impact on our office. Standing desks. Standing desks. These convertible desks. Yeah, standing desks. That's why, you know, I mean, you're a stander all the time. Yeah. And, you know, we've been looking at, well, why are you standing? Well, it's healthier for you. Yep. It's better for you. Yep. And so, you know, we encourage our members to, if they want one. And... It's great. They do. They love it. They're standing. They're active. They're healthier. Uh, another thing that we also offered them is those ball chairs. Yeah. 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 Our employees. So our members and our employees. And our employees. Yeah. And our employees. Right. So we have uh, what's called convertible standing desks. Yes. And so it's funny. There was a study I read that standing all the time is not good for you. And sitting all the time is not good for you. Oh. It's actually the, the variation. So what I did for myself about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I went standing. I don't stand all I mean, I stand at that desk all the time. But we're sitting right now, right? right. We're doing the podcast. I, I, you'll sit at lunch. I still sit for about four hours out of an eight-hour day just because the nature of it. But now I'm standing for at least four hours. And with our colleagues here, we've done the same thing now. We have these standing desks. They can convert. And when they want to sit, because they're not doing the podcast, they're out there working right now, right. they can convert it to a sitting desk. It's neat. And you give them those little mats so their feet don't hurt. Yeah. And, and you know what? They love it. They they really, it, it's it's an enjoyable thing. They crank that thing up, yep. you know, and they're sitting there. And it's nice walking into the office and everybody's standing. Yeah. It's Yeah. It's, so yeah. a couple of things. It brings energy mm -hmm. to you. Also brings confidence. There's been a lot of talks. I know you do you a lot of sales calls in your past. There's a lot of talk about standing up when you when make you're calls. Selling. Yeah, yeah, because it brings that confidence. So consider for you. Here's your little insider access. Consider getting one of those convertible standing desks. They're inexpensive. There's countless ones out there. It'll bring you better energy. It's better for your health and higher confidence when you make phone calls as your uh, you know a future advisor. And I'm smiling about the joke you played on me. Mike's about uh, two inches taller than I am. Oh, I lowered the desk. <laughs> he lowered the That's desk so I could see it. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. You. That was cute. That was a while back. Um, but yeah, simple insider look at uh, what we we're doing over here to make this thing great. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that was good. Yeah. Uh, let's do one more thing. Oh! No! Here it is, Mike. Gosh. Well, I, you know what? I got these 80 speakers I'm bringing in so we can crank, crank this up. Style. Maybe we go this song. Maybe we go this song instead of Thunderstruck all the time. Uh, well, no. it's got to be. Yeah, Thunderstruck is such a tradition here. Right. But uh, why do we crank up this music? Because we want you to get jacked up. This is the GMAP Now test. The one test that if you do it, you will see a result in your business. It's real simple. It's called the Washington's Crossing Technique. We actually use no. this to start our company. All the, oh, my gosh. Absolutely. Every single day. I still use it. You still use it? I still use it when I'm sharing the story. All right. So here's the key. You're moving to advisory services. Ian's told you why it's so important, how to do it. They even have a tool that does it. But you got to have that first, we call it the surgeon's operation, right? That first heart surgery. You have to do mm -hmm. it the first time. Thing is, when you do your first advisory to service to a client, you can't say, uh, you know, I've done hundreds of these before. That's called lying. You have to be <laughs> truthful. But how do you do it in a way they still want to do it with you? You use the Washington's Crossing. Basically, you acknowledge the risk they're taking by joining you. Just like when George Washington crossed the Delaware to take on the British Army on Christmas morning, he knew those soldiers were taking on a massive risk. And the, the potential of, of disaster was real. It was... It was pragmatic. It was quite plausible. But they did it anyway because he said the upside was potentially tremendous. Were they willing to take the risk? Do the same. Unless when, you're in England. Right, unless you're in England. <laughs> if, you're right, right, that's a good point. if you're approaching a client, tell them the risk they're taking. You can use the Washington's Crossing analogy if you wish. But tell them the risk that they're taking. I said pragmatic before. I meant to say palpable. Uh, tell them the risk they're taking. But, and you understand, but that the upside potential is very high, and then help them mitigate their risk. Saying, listen, I know that you're my first advisory client. I feel very confident you're going to see extraordinary results, but here's the risk, the way I'll mitigate the risk. Um, as we move along, every week I'll check in with you. If you're not 100% satisfied, here's the actions we'll take. Uh, we'll rectify it. Uh, you'll help navigate a better outcome. Maybe you'll even say, you know, we'll cut costs or something. These are things, by the way, you would do if the customer complained anyway. But by proactively telling what's going on, it's then, an inoculation. Yeah, you've inoculated them, and uh, they're more likely to be your first ever advisory. And, and what I've heard, people they they're like they like that. They like that openness. Exactly. They like hearing the truth. Uh, hey, listen, there might be a few bumps in this ride here. Yep. But you know, I'm. Just, 
or some icebergs like Washington or ice <laughs> chunks. Ice, icebergs? Right? Ice, yeah, he, no. was, he was even on a little rowboat, yeah, not the no. Titanic. Well, comparatively to a rowboat, they look like icebergs. <laughs> there you go. Do awesome. it now. Nice job, Mike. Do it today. Thank you. All right, guys. Um, Ryan, we got to wrap things up. Yeah, here, absolutely. Brother. Thank you, all you listeners. Uh, and what a great episode. What a great guest. Um, you can f- thank you for joining us today. And you can review us on Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn Radio. Of course, we would love to get your five-star ratings, but your feedback is what's most important. Yeah, please uh, share your thoughts. And, and do you have some other insights, other ideas that other listeners could hear? Put it in GMAP, um, GMAP uh, iTunes, wherever you're listening. Or email me. Or email Ron. But we want to see him publicly if you can. Sure. Because we want other guests to see him too. And Ron and I, of course, are up there and we'll respond also. Uh, and one more thing. We'd love to see you visit ProfitFirstProfessionals.com. That's right. We have a family of accountants and bookkeepers here who are doing advisory services around the Profit First methodology. We've developed a method here that you can deliver profit to any of your clients. You can increase their profit. On our sister show called the Profit First Podcast, we had a shout out from a client of a Profit First professional who went from 10% profitability to 29.5% profitability awesome. in six months. And their goal was 30%. And oh. he said, within one year. And he's like, we're already there. He says we rounded up 0.5. We're already there within six months. That's great. That's what you can do for your client. And trust me, when you're they're more profitable, you're more profitable. We have to do one more thing. You have to go visit our website. Go to ProfitFirstProfessionals.com. Click on the Become button. Actually, once you look at that, there's multiple ways. You can call us, you can email us, or you can fill out the quick form. You can get hold of us. We'll have a conversation. And if there's a fit, woof, we're off to the races. You're making your clients and you more profitable than ever before. All right. I think we're good for today. Yeah. Ready to go? Yep. All right. We'll see you guys. See ya.